Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Links. My disappointment is immeasurable, and my day is ruined. It is once again that time. Time again for the great content drought, also known as the KC Cup, where there is no new content released for weeks, meaning I have to find something else to upload. So since it's been a while since I've done one of these budget deck videos, and I know you guys enjoy them as they are some of the most watched videos on my channel, here's the next instalment of my top 5 budget competitive decks. So for those of you that are new to this little series of mine, this content will be a little different to the normal stuff you see from me. For starters, there will be zero gameplay in this video. This video will be basically just be me talking over a bunch of deck lists. The 5 deck lists I have chosen, unlike the last video, will be shown in no particular order, but will follow the same guidelines, to an extent. All cards must be obtainable with gems. That means each deck can only play one copy of a structure deck max. Although something like Ancient Gear may be a pretty fairly cheap way to play Duel Links, it does require three copies of a structure deck to complete it, and I know 90% of the people that click this video will be completely free to play and not want to spend any money at all. Each deck list must be somewhat competitive. Now I'm not saying that all these deck lists have to be tournament winning or meta defining, each list, at a bare minimum, has to be a King of Games worthy list. That is, decent to climb with on ladder, even if you have to wait to the end of the month to do so, when the ladder is a little bit easier. And finally, every single list in this video cannot be a list I have previously featured in one of my other budget videos, as to make it so you guys can check out those if you want some more budget lists. Alright, so the first deck list I'm going to be showcasing is by far the most competitive of the bunch. Lunalight. Lunalight is a deck that was released into Duel Links quite recently, and a lot of you guys will recognise it, due to its high popularity and competitive viability. This deck is one of the better decks right now for climbing to King of Games, as each duel is relatively quick, and it can compete very easily with just about all the top tier decks in the game. Seriously, up until last week this deck was still on the tournament tier list for Duel Links meta, so even in tournaments this deck list has the potential to top. The decklist has two main strategies, both revolving around fusion monsters. The first is to summon Saber Dancer, which is a very high attack, untargetable monster, making it a pretty difficult card to remove, especially in matchups like Dark Magician, where summoning this card may just win you the game instantly, as your opponent will struggle to find an out. The other strat is simple, it's an OTK via Cat Dancer. This card cannot be destroyed by battle, but most importantly, by tributing off another Lunar Knight monster, this card can attack each monster your opponent controls twice, the first time not destroying the monster. And when combined with Crimson Fox, which can reduce the attack of an opponent's monster to zero, you have a pretty easy OTK. Basically, the entire decklist can be found inside the box Judgment Force, outside of the poly, which can be found as a level up reward in starter decks, or just a card trader card, and of course, Fusion Recycling Plant, which honestly, if you don't have another copy of this, you can just run Polarization, as it really doesn't matter all that much. Next up, we have a deck list I know the comment section will get angry at me for promoting, but sadly, it has to be done. Cyberstein. Cyberstein has been a deck list that has roamed around Duel Links since its creation, and it's a deck list that is known to be brain damaged, as it literally takes no brain cell to play. This deck is basically one big coin flip, but it's generally a coin flip that's in your favour. I was originally quite hesitant to put this list into the video due to how coin flippy this deck actually is, making it kind of difficult to call it competitive. But people do reach King of Games with Cyberstein lists every month, even having a fairly recent tournament topping, placing 32 out of 173 players, so I think it does meet the criteria. The strategy of this deck is extremely simple. Use two life point gain cards to put your life points above 5,000. Summon Cyberstein and pay 5,000 life points to summon one of your fusion monsters. Going first, normally this means Ojama King to lock out all of your opponent's monster zones. 
Then you can activate Life Cost Zero to once again activate Cyberstein for free to summon another big fusion monster, such as Cavalry or Barbaroid, which will generally lead to either an OTK or a board state that is basically impossible to out. The decklist itself is the cheapest decklist on this list, being nearly every single card is either a character drop reward or obtainable from the card trader, outside of Hatronade, which is a card you don't actually have to run and a lot of people already don't. And the extra deck, which is extremely interchangeable as there are a lot of generic fusions in the game for Cyber's Knight to summon. The third deck list I'm going to showcase is going to be a little odd, but there's actually going to be two lists, one of which being the opposite of free to play, and that is Blue Eyes. Now, though you probably heard that name and thought, what? How can you call a deck that uses like 20 Ultra Rares free to play? It's because Blue Eyes is the single most upgradable deck in the game and is perfect for new players. What I mean by that is the deck list on the left is a deck comprised of not a single card from a box, literally one copy of a structure deck and a bunch of card trader slash rank reward cards, and you have the deck. And although it might not be all that competitive at the high levels yet, as someone who is new to the game, this is perfect, as due to the absolute abundance of blue eye support in the game, it can be exceptionally easy to upgrade this deck over time, just something similar to the list you might see on the right, which honestly isn't even the only way to play the deck. You could upgrade it in a multitude of ways, including a discard style, such as this deck list, which topped a recent MCS. The strategy for this deck doesn't even change all that much as you upgrade it. It's basically just a bunch of low level monsters that you either aim to destroy, tribute or discard to summon Blue Eyes White Dragon from the deck. Obviously this gets a lot easier as you get into some of the more ultra rare monsters, but like I said the general gist of the deck doesn't change all that much. The main upgrade for this list is the White Stone of Ancients, which is obtainable through the mini box Lords of Shining, and the rest of the support being sprinkled amongst other boxes such as Judgment Force. But like I said, to play this deck at a base level, you literally don't need any cards from boxes. This deck is the best list if you want a deck to start with, and have an end goal to build towards. The fourth list is a free to play deck list you would have seen on my channel quite recently. Arrow Mage. Arrow Mage have always been a pretty large fan favourite, especially amongst the free to play community, as the base of the deck can all be obtained through the card trader, and up until recently, that was the only place to obtain Arrow Mage cards. I avoided including this archetype in my previous two budget videos, as honestly, without the recent support they added, it was quite bad, and in my opinion had no competitive viability. But thanks to its new box support, the archetype finally can achieve King of Games fairly consistently. Now the decklist I'm showing you right now is my favourite way to play a Rome Mage, as it's essentially an extremely heavy control style deck that relies on continuous traps and spells to recycle your monsters, destroy your opponent's monsters, and gain an absurd amount of life points. And of course, I like to include a Cyberstein for a bonus win condition, but he isn't actually necessary, I just find him pretty fun as an addition. This isn't the only way to play the deck. The archetype does contain a couple of special summonable tuners and a synchro monster for if you want to go down a more synchro style route, or even combine the two deck lists together. The deck list excluding the extra deck can be obtained entirely through the card trader and the new box Fortress of Gears, with the only difficult card to obtain being Humid Winds which in my opinion is probably the weaker of the traps anyway, so running it as a one-of is pretty viable. If you want a more extensive video on this archetype and specifically this decklist, I do have one that I uploaded recently on my channel, so feel free to check that one out. The final decklist and probably the most interesting list, as it does not contain a single spell or trap card, Super Heavy Samurai. This archetype is one of the most unique archetypes in the game, as like I said the decklist quite literally cannot use spell and trap cards, if you want it to function properly. And not only that, all of your monsters can attack whilst in defence position. This archetype is a relatively newish archetype to the game, and since its release it has always sat at a rogue level, almost being tournament level, but never quite reaching it. But it's certainly strong enough to get King of Games pretty damn easily. The goal of the deck is generally an OTK style, that aims to summon Stealth Ninja and just use its effect to smack your opponent directly, whilst being equipped with a bunch of equipped monsters that either give it multiple attacks a turn or buff the shit out of it. The coolest thing about this deck, in my opinion, is that despite it being an OTK style, 
it actually has a pretty safe turn 1, which is kind of unusual. This is thanks to Stealth Ninja having a pretty solid revive effect, so you can summon this turn 1 and the likelihood of it coming back next turn is pretty high. And thanks to Giga Gloves, which whilst in the graveyard can protect your life points. The decklist on screen can be obtained completely after one rotation of the Future Horizon box, and can honestly be upgraded to TAD by just going through it a couple more times to obtain extra copies of the Ultra Rare and the SRs in the list. Alright guys, that's it for this edition of my budget list series. If you like this video, make sure you leave a like, subscribe if you're new around here, comment if you have any questions or feedback, make sure you check out my Discord, Patreon and Twitch down below. And if you happen to have a dollar lying around and wish to support me, feel free to click that join button down below to support me directly as well as gain access to a few little neat perks. Hey big brother, can I watch Spongebob? Shut up Mokuba, I'm busy flagging YouTube videos to compensate for the fact that I have an extremely small penis. Oh.